Welcome to the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, where you get multifamily investing made real. Learn from top players in the real estate investment world as they share their secrets with you and discover proven strategies on apartment investing that actually work. To learn more about Wheelbarrow Profits, visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. Now to your hosts, Jake and Gino. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barrow. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, doing good today. We've got an awesome guest, a lot of wisdom to share today, my friend. You got some old school New York soldiers in the house, right? We'll talk about that in a little bit. So <laughs> right. let's, uh, let's, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsor and then we'll get into this. Jake, the question I've been asking you, do you need a great property management software for your rental portfolio? I said that the first time we started out, we didn't have one, Jake. What were we doing? Sending papers back and forth from New York to Tennessee, right? Well, we came up with a company called Property Czar. They're a web-based property management software designed for portfolios of all sizes. Properties are includes all the features of the leading software vendors at prices that are affordable for even the smaller portfolios. Where they own 10 units, 950 units like us, 10,000 units, Properties are's base entry point is affordable for everybody, right? Properties are comes with complete accounting systems in addition to calculating your cap rates and your cash on cash returns. With Properties are, you can track your assets, so you screen your tenants, accept online payments conduct on-site inspections, online applications, schedule appointments. You do all that stuff, Jake. Whew. Tenants can even submit work orders along with pictures via the mobile app. Schedule your appointments and set unlimited reminders to all attendees. You can also set reminders to change HVAC filters or service other equipment. Properties are is one of the most user-friendly applications on the market, but just don't take our word for it. The word free, Jake likes to hear. Just try it for free. Find out why Properties Are is quickly becoming the property management solution for portfolios of all sizes. And right now, our listeners can start a free trial. That's right, F-R-E-E, and no credit card required. Just go to propertiesar.com slash G-I-N-O. That's propertiesar.com slash Gino. Hey, man, it's all about the systems, and today's guest knows all about the systems. Today's guest is Dean Graziosi. Dean knows how to create success. From extremely humble beginnings, Dean started a firewood business in high school. Actually, we thought about that, so we'll have to talk about that in a little bit, too. To a collision repair shop and his first real estate deal before the age of 20. From there, he went on to create a multi-million dollar real estate business, become a multiple New York Times bestselling author, 16 years every day on TV, and is one of the most watched real estate and success trainers of our generation. Dean is obsessed with sharing the success habits learned along this journey with the world. So without further ado, Dean, welcome to the show. Man, good to be here, man. How you guys doing? Good. Hey, man, we're great. We're, we, we are pumped about this. And, and I want to hear a little bit about that firewood company and then the transition <laughs> to real estate because I, I, I like you grew up in Western New York and my grandfather had like all these acres and would cut wood and burn wood. And I was like, well, maybe I can sell these. I never got around to it, but it sounds like you did. So let's, let's hear about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, uh, it's good to be here, guys. It's good to be here. And, uh, it, and I, uh, First off, before we even start, uh, just for you guys sharing your wisdom, sharing what you've discovered, sharing what you learned from other people, I, I commend you uh, both, uh, Gino and Jake, for doing that. And everybody listening, you know, the, 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 the hardest way to success, like I always say, learning through your own trial and error is so like 90s. You know, it's like, I used to think we used to, we used to feel like we had to be rugged individualists. I, I use that. <laughs> I use that. I, I heard that term a long time ago. And it's like, the rugged individualist is like, no, I don't want to like you're, the entrepreneurial flair, but feeling like I just got to go out and conquer and do it myself and learn through my own mistakes. And that's just the most costly and stupid way to do it. We've all learned that and grown. That's why podcasts do so good. It's why online training is the fastest growing business in the world. So uh, I commend you guys, Jake and Gino, for for being here and sharing. But literally, everybody listening, you're smart enough to realize why figure this shit out on your own, for lack of a better word, when you can just that's rob what we're here guys for. Figure it out. Yes. Right? You guys, you guys have already made plenty of mistakes right. that other people don't need to make, right? So, oh, all right, firewood business. It was pretty simple. I, I was a broke kid and and I wanted to have money. And uh, and at the time, uh, there was in my little town in upstate New York, there was a lot of uh, uh, development going on in single family homes. And I'd see they, you know, you lived in Western New York, both of you guys have been in New York, uh, you know, upstate, it's all trees and big oak trees and ash trees and maple trees. So every time they'd buy a house, they'd pay someone to go in and clean the lot off. 
And then I also knew there was a firewood business. So I was double dipping. So I would charge someone to clean their lot. Well, simultaneously, I'd take the wood home, cut it, split it, and then sell it at 90 bucks a cord. So when I was in 12th grade, I had half the football team working for me. And, uh, and uh, I was making, I was, I was netting about 500 bucks a week in high school, which was like as much as my science teacher was making. You know what I mean? You're making it rain. I was making it rain. Yeah, I thought I was the richest guy, you know. I remember the thinking to myself, man Marlboro. <laughs> yeah, I remember thinking to myself, you know, my, I, I think I'm making almost what my English teacher is making and I haven't even started yet. But, uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Well, listen, I, any, any story with the chainsaw, Jake's all over that. Cause when I heard firewood, I'm like, Oh my God, here goes the chainsaw, chainsaw story <laughs> again. So let me ask you I, real 16 years. How do you stay motivated before you get into the, your first deal and all that? How do you stay motivated and inspired to do your weekly calls do that for 16 years? That takes a lot of energy and devotion. So I think, I think this, and I think this might apply to everybody. I think there's a certain part of our careers, and maybe you guys have felt it, where we're running away from something we don't want. We're running away from a childhood with no money, maybe feeling broke. Maybe you were the kid got made fun of in school. Your girlfriend in high school told you to be a loser. Your parents didn't tell you, you loved, they loved you enough. Your dad was never home. Your dad was an alcoholic. Your parents split up. I, you know, and, and I'm not, I, I'm, I've had a lot of those things that I just shared, but I think there's a point where entrepreneurs and people that want more doesn't and you have to be an entrepreneur but you want more success in your life i think part of us are driven by moving away from something painful right you don't want those experiences you want to run away from that and create independence strength freedom control of your life and then i think there's a certain time in your life where it flips and then all of a sudden you start seeing where you could be going like you got away from that pain you're no longer the broke kid you're no longer the one that people make fun of you're all you're someone people actually admire they look up to they want to know your strategies and i know for me i think there was a long time where i was running away from old pain that i wanted to get past me and get my own freedom and control of my life and then there was a point where i realized the amount of people i'm affecting and the amount of uh, you know, people that don't have anybody to inspire them or don't have anybody to give those gifts. And then the more I share, the more success people had. And now I have 11 and a nine-year-old, I have a nine-year-old and 11-year-old uh, kids. And I want to leave a legacy for them. I want them to Google me someday and say, holy crap, look what my dad did. Look at the books he wrote. Look at the people he helped. So I think there's always, I guess the answer is, uh, Gino, there is always a place to find motivation. And what I tell anybody listening, if your motivation is pain, who gives a shit? Just use that pain. In fact, when you don't feel motivated, let the pain sink in so it feels so bad that your ass moves. Or if you're like, I don't really have any pain, then find pleasure. I mean, everything in life, we make decisions based on fear and pleasure, pain and pleasure, right? That's life. That's every emotion boils down to you move away from pain or you want to move towards pleasure. So just use them and multiply them so it gets your butt in gear. So I think... I th- yeah, that's a simple answer. That's a great answer. Some people don't want to feel uncomfortable. So you're basically talking about feeling uncomfortable sometimes. That that pain, that's what, that's what got me out of the restaurant. I couldn't take it anymore. I felt like a, I felt like I was not contributing. I wasn't growing. You're talking Tony Robbins right now. There's the fifth and sixth fundamental you know, laws. I was not contributing. I wasn't growing. People get stuck and they don't want to feel uncomfortable. And I think you, felt, you must have felt uncomfortable and said, hey, listen, I got it. I got to tap into that pain. A lot of people don't tap into that pain. What do you say to them if they want to tap into the pain? They're going to get stuck. I'm sure people come to you all the time and say, how do I do it? Yeah, so think about this. Think about every big breakthrough you've ever had in your life. Usually, your next level of life lives on the other side of your biggest obstacle. That's just what it is. There's a certain amount of people, you guys have both experienced people in life, they move, 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 and they got to a certain level and they were just stuck. It's because they hid an obstacle they were afraid to go through. Whether that's being stuck in a bad relationship, stuck in a bad job, stuck on trying to start your own business. You, you had a fear, you had a limiting belief, you had something maybe your parents instilled in you that said, no, if you try your own business, you go broke. Or with this kind of president, it won't work. Or with this kind of economy, it won't work. And you have that fear and you let that build. And listen, no one wants to be uncomfortable. But if you look at life, I mean, there's a million different answers I could give, but this is one that I've been thinking about lately. If you're listening right now and you feel a little bit stuck or you you feel like you could have gone further, the hell with the past. Your past is nothing more than research and development. You can't unwind it. You can't undo it. You can't get a makeover. So take from your past what serves you and burn the rest down. That's, that's literally the best way to think about it. Take what serves you, take what can push you forward, take the lessons, burn the, the rest down. And then realize where you're at right now in your life is just a chapter in a long book. And every good book, every good story, every good wealth story, every good love story, every good movie you watch has shitty chapters. 
at just the way it goes. And when you're in it, you have two decisions. Can, do you want the rest of your life to be that book? The chapter you're in now, if you're stuck, you're fearful, you're afraid. Do you want the rest of your book to be the guy that was fearful, the woman that was fearful, afraid, and didn't make a move? Or do you want to say, what can I learn from this? Listen, when people say, learn from your problems, learn from your failures, when you're in the middle of a problem or a failure, you're like, shut up. Like, this is painful. <laughs> it sucks. Don't tell me I'm going to learn from it. But what you can do while you're in it is you could say, this is just a chapter. Let me take a deep breath. And what are the lessons I'm being taught right now that can allow me to go through the obstacle in front of me? Because literally always, if you guys think about the biggest thing you were afraid of, maybe the first big apartment building you guys bought, the first time you decided to teach other people to do it, you had doubts, you had people tell you you're crazy, you were scared to do it, but think you're on the other side of doing the first deal or training is probably the greatest moments you have when you signed the first deal, when you collected the first rent, when you got the first payoff. It never would have happened if you didn't face your fears. So no matter what level they're on, if we don't face them, we say stuck. I mean, that's just, that's just life. Lean in, right? I think lean Matt Fairclaw yeah. said it a few weeks ago, Gino, just lean in. I remember, you know, we go back because the, the first deal we got was this 25 unit. It was a disaster, right? And I remember we had to collect cash. And I remember laying all the cash out from that 25 unit across the dresser. And I was taking pictures and sending it to Gino. And it was my first time as a business owner. And I just remember sending them. That, you know, obviously it was a disaster. We should have yeah. been collecting cash. <laughs> and that's what I said to him. I said, bro, bro cash? Like, you, you're killing me, cash? But it was, like, it was like one of those moments that you just described where you're scared to death. You got there and you're like, we can figure this out now. So I just, to, to what Dean said, lean in, man. Lean in. So I love that. So you, you got the firewood business. Why real estate? How did you stumble upon real estate? And let's talk about your first deal you got into real estate. Um, so really, I, I mean, I'd love to have a really elaborate elegant story other than I was broke <laughs> and the people in my town that had money and seemed to be happy were in real estate. Like that's literally as simple as it was. And then I probably saw Carlton Sheets on TV said you could do deals with no money down, but I probably didn't have the money to buy Carlton Sheets course, which I probably should have. I don't know if it was good or not. Um, but I just started, I just started modeling people that were doing deals and I knocked on a gazillion doors in my town until I finally got a no money down deal. Someone held the paper on it. Um, I got in with sweat equity. Uh, it was a 10 unit apartment house. It was an old mansion converted to an apartment house. I got in it with no money down and literally worked on cars all day. I'd go eat dinner at five o'clock. And at night I learned to be a, a sheet rocker, a taper, a plumber, electrician. Not that I'd suggest anybody do that route, but that was the route I took. I just thought I had to figure it out on my own. Um, and I got one apartment done at a time. I'd literally live in an apartment while I was working on it. I'd get it all done and be perfect. And I'd move out to one that wasn't ready. And I'd rent the one that I was living in. So for a, a year, I kind of lived in half house done apartments. Um, and then I get one done, rent it, get one done. And finally I had 10 units rented. I was living there for free. I had, you know, several thousand bucks a month coming in. Um, and it just kind of taught me this lesson. I was living for free, making money. And, uh, that's how the real estate career started. Oh, wow. So that was the breakthrough. When did you really see that real estate was viable and you wanted to do the, do it full time? When was that transition for you? Um, mid twenties, mid twenties. Um, I started buying, uh, uh, I had probably 30 apartments at the time, and then I started buying land and subdividing it and building houses, um, you know, just started expanding and expanding, and then uh, then decided, uh, because of Tony Robbins, watching him on TV, I mean, now he's a dear friend of mine, but he wasn't back then, he was just someone I admired, uh, watching him with his infomercial uh, for years on TV, I'm like, man, I'm doing great in real estate, I want to I wanna share it with the world, so I, you know, I hired a crew, wrote a course, and got myself on TV and had no idea what I was doing for the first, for the first year I was, I was funding the infomercial training education business with real estate flips. Every time I needed more money, I'd go flip a house, take the 30 grand, dump it in the company. That'd be gone in, you know, 18 days and go back and do it again. But you know, through trial and error, lots of failure, lots of successes, we figured it out. But that's amazing because back then that wasn't even on the radar. You were, you were one of the pioneers, right? I mean, back then no one was really yeah. doing that. Carlton Sheets was doing it. There's some infomercials. But I mean, what, what gave you the idea to, to come up with that, to start doing an infomercial? I mean, that was really revolutionary back then, wasn't it? You know, here, yeah, it is. I mean, here's the thing. I, was, I did my first infomercial uh, in November of 2000, or 1998. I went live uh, <clears throat> 20, almost 20 years ago. November 2000, yeah, 1998. Um, honestly, Gino and, and Jake, think back of the biggest decisions you made in your life. A lot of times you do it when you're naive. 
Like if someone told you all the trials and tribulations of owning multi-units, and if you had someone that was negative or someone that bought a thousand doors and flipped upside down and lost it because they made dumb decisions, that person would tell you why you shouldn't do it, what, how it could go wrong, right? And, and I think we go into things the best when we're naive because at the end of the day, multi-units is an amazing way to make money. It's changed so many people's lives. Look what it's done for you guys. Look at the people you get to help. People listening right now, some of them lives are completely different. Their security is good. They know their kids are going to be good because of what you taught them and what they're doing, right? But I think as life goes on, and this is a good lesson for everybody to think about right now, we've been told what could go wrong so many times. We've been told no so many times. We listen to the negative media, the, the news, you know, uh, Time Magazine back in the 50s used to be 80% cover. The, the covers of Time Magazine in the 50s, 80% were positive, imagine that. And now Time Magazine, 92% of the covers are negative, right? So think about all news, the more negative we get, the more exposure they get. So that's of course how agencies, but that's the whole world, right? Go through a Facebook feed, it's negative. What's wrong? Who died? Whose fault it is? What's wrong with the present? What's wrong, right? So what happens is I think over time, and everybody should think about this, is you start developing skepticism towards anything new. And we stand on the sidelines. We regret standing on the sidelines. We hate standing on the sidelines, but we do because we're afraid. And if I look back why I went in the infomercial business in my 20s, because I was naive. I saw Tony Robbins do it. I'm like, shit, I have a message I want to share, right? I didn't overthink it. At this age, I might go, well, statistically speaking, 92% of all infomercials don't make it. And if you do make it, then you have to build a company. And then you just talk yourself out of it and you play small, even though you hate playing small. So I would say to everybody listening right now, if you're, if you're thinking about going to the next level, here's the thing or thinking about doing multi-units is gain the education from people playing the game at the highest level possible. That's why you're listening to Jake and Gina, right? You want to, you want to learn from somebody that's doing it. If you want to play tennis, doesn't matter how many less, how many games your aunt Edna watched. Uh, she's not the one that's going to teach you how to play tennis. If she's just watching, you want to learn from someone who played the game. So I think about, you said, why to go in the infomercial business? I was naive, okay. but that naiveness allowed me to jump in and then I learned a really valuable lesson. I just started finding people who were doing what I wanted to do and I'd make friends with them and I'd absorb their knowledge and I'd get the fast track. And that's, you know, that's one of the biggest secrets to success. Just rob what other people are doing and learn from there. Jake, we talked about this a few days ago. It's the immigrant mentality. My parents are both immigrants. My father opens a restaurant. He has no business doing it. I've got a lot of Italians who own uh, apartment buildings in the Bronx. They could barely read and write English. But like you said, they had no fear and they just didn't know what they were doing. And they made, they made money and they took risks. Bro, it's every business that we've started. We shouldn't have, we didn't know anything about any of the businesses yeah. that we're in now. And we're, we're in 10 or 12 different entities. And it's like, uh -huh. should we have been in any of them? Probably yeah. not. But you know, uh -huh. it, was, it was to his point, we're naive. We said, if someone else can do it, so can we. So let's just jump in and figure it out. Right. But that, I mean, but think about that. And here's something pretty cool. You guys can Google it, everybody listening and you guys can do it. Did you know, I think the number is this, I think it's 70, it's like 71% of all self-made millionaires in America, self-made starting with nothing are immigrants right now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's huge. I had no idea. And, yeah. Google it. It's in that neighborhood. Dan yeah. Sullivan, I'm in strategic coach. He loves throwing that number out, but there's a couple of reasons why is because they leave all their shit, for lack of a better word, in their past, right? They come here, think about it. It's like they have to leave family, they have to leave friends, they have to leave their mistakes, and they get here and they start fresh, right? And also they're hungry, right? So that, that combo of the two works hard and they're a little naive, right? They're, they're, not, they're not totally with it, to totally maybe watching the news. So if you think about how do you implement a little bit of that immigrant mindset into all of us. You know, it's funny, you said my family all came from Italy too. And a couple of years ago, I went back, took my dad for his birthday. And we went back and visited where his family was born and where my mom's family was born. And I went to the house where my grandfather was born and they still live there. The Graziosi family still lives in this house. There's still holes in the side of the house where the <laughs> pigeons make nests and they go out and swipe the pigeons at night and throw them in the sauce, right? It's like, they still have their sheep out back where they get their milk. They still have goats. They still, I mean, my yeah. grandfather, my grandfather was the crazy one that left. Everybody said, oh, Carmen, Carmen Graziosi, he was nuts. He got on a donkey and headed down to the, <laughs> the docks, right? But I think about that. That was my grandfather. Mm -hmm. He left there and look where I get to be. Look at my kids, like just a couple generations later, right? So mm -hmm. I, I know we digressed here. Uh, probably the Italian thing got me 
got me thinking about that. But if you think about it in your own life, adopt a little bit of an immigrant mentality. Remember, your past can be your anchor or the fuel. And what I believe is I, I look at it like your past is if you're if your past is all in a building and it's all burning and you only have a suitcase to bring your past with you, run into the building, put in the suitcase that what serves you, that what you can learn from, and let the rest of your past burn down. Start fresh today. We get to make that decision this moment. I want to touch on that just a little bit because both Gino, myself, and I guess you, you as well, Dean, have moved from New York, completely burned the ships, and gone to a completely different state for various reasons. But I think that's not totally moving now. But I mean, that's that's you know, I'm 11 hours, Gino. You're 15 hours from home, Dean. I don't know. You're 20 probably at this point. Yeah. But that that had a profound impact on on my life. And going back to the other thing you said, a lot of immigrants don't go out looking for a job. They go and start a business. Yeah. So right from the beginning, you start a business, you start to figure out how businesses work. A lot of folks never, they're just employees their entire life. So they never have an opportunity to even start a business and figure it out. But uh, I, I don't know where we're going with this, but this yeah, stuff is either. great. And it's, yeah, it's yeah. wildly impactful. You know, I, don't, I don't want to go down the wrong direction. So give me any great questions that you got and we'll get back, uh, we'll get back on Good track. Good stuff though. I love well, it. No, I, I've read the Millionaire Success Habits and I want to just tell everyone out there, Dean is unique in the fact that he presents stuff on how to do real estate. Most gurus tell you why. He did it backwards. He was teaching people how to do it. Then he writes a book on why you should do it. So I want you to tell the people, what's the message that you want people to take away from reading your book? For millionaire success habits, you know, I've just been in this space for so long, right? I've, I've been blessed to touch the lives of millions of people, speak on big stages. I've read tens of thousands of comments. And, and I think what everybody has to realize is whether it's multi-unit houses or writing a book or starting a pizza restaurant or anything you want to do, there's one step before success can happen. And that's what I think about with millionaire success habits. You know, wealthy people, successful people, happy people have a different set of rules than most everybody else. When I look at, when I was growing up, I look at my dad. He never made more than 35 grand a year. Great guy, good dad, tried really hard, but money was always an obstacle in his life because he had some really shitty habits when it came to being successful, overcoming obstacles, being positive, all these things that people sometimes take for granted. And then I looked at, successful people had just a different set of habits. And then, you know, at this age, I'm going to be 50 this year. I look back over my life and I realized what made the biggest shifts of going from a kid who lived in a trailer park that, you know, I lived in a bathroom with my dad when I was a kid because we didn't have any other place to live uh, I, and didn't go to college. And I, I look at that. I don't say that to be poor me. It's my, it's my journey. I was supposed to take it. But I look, it wasn't the magic money machines. It wasn't that I just stumbled over my first real estate deal. Before I knocked on a million doors to get my first real estate deal with no money down, I had some habits that allowed me to overcome everybody telling me no, to overcome the obstacles, people telling me I was crazy. And, and I just it's just been this, this evolution in my life to realize that if I can give people the habits for success, they can plug in anything they want. I hope it's real estate. I hope it's multi-units if they're listening to you. But when the, the deal goes sour, when your wife says you're crazy for doing it, when your boss tells you you're an idiot, when your parents sit you down and tell you you can't do this, or you feel anxious, or you feel anxiety, or you feel worried, or old limiting beliefs that we went to school saying we should get a job and be, play it safe, all that stuff comes into play. Successful people have different rules, and they've always had different rules. And I just thought it was time people had the, the reason why they make this. People need to know why they've played small why they haven't started their own business, why they listen to a boss they know that they're smarter in. And once you understand that why and understand ways to overcome it, I think, you know, I think it's the reason the book's on fire. It's the, it's the best-selling book. I have multiple New York Times best-selling books, but no book has ever taken off like this. I mean, we, I think we sold 150,000 copies on Facebook alone. I mean, it's unbelievable awesome. the momentum this is getting right now. And I'm happy. I mean, at, at this phase of my life, it's what I wrote the book for. But there's a reason why, because you already had the credibility and the how. So people already knew your strategies work. So they're like, this guy's yeah. got a lot of experience. So it just translates into the why. Can you touch on some of those characteristics of successful people? Before you get into habits, what do you see that is imbued in successful people? What are the traits that you see in all successful people? You know, there's a, that's a really great question, because I've been obsessed with looking at that more in the last five years than ever. Successful people know exactly what they want out of life. Mm. Like Immediately, you, yes. could be in an, you could be in an elevator with uh, somebody hugely successful and just say, hey, hey, what's the next year of your life look like? And you'll watch a successful person tell you just like that. Literally, 
next 10 people you interview, next person you see that's got 5,000 units, say, hey, what's the next year of your life look like? They'll go, oh, here's what I'm doing. I got 5,000 units, but I found a way to refinance, pull my cash out. I'm going to double my units. By next year, I'll be at 10,000. If you ask most people, and this doesn't make you bad, this is the way the universe, this is the way the world has taught us, people know what the unsuccessful people or people struggling know what they don't want. It's, it's, it's just the most common thread. I mean, I do this all the time. I I've asked thousands of people. If you, everybody listen right now, do prove me wrong. In the next week, ask 10 people what they don't want out of life. Just say, Hey man, what's, what's up with your life? What don't you want? Oh, I don't want my wife to nag me. My husband to be a pain in the ass. I don't want my job anymore. I don't want to feel broke. I don't want, I don't want my tent. I don't want, don't want, don't want, don't want. And then stop them in the middle, like abruptly go, okay, okay. I get it. What do you want out of life? Mm -hmm. And you watch nine out of 10 will go, oh, that's a really good question. Or, Let me think about that. Ever, no, 100% of the time, 90% will do that. And it's like, think about it. We're all in Ferraris in today's world because we all got technology that kicks ass. We got our phone and, and all this you know, amazing technology at our fingertips. So we're all in Ferraris. We're all going 100 miles an hour. And 95% of the world has no idea where they're going. Their GPS isn't on. They're driving fast with no destination and they wonder why they keep getting lost. So the, 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 what I know successful people know, and I'll give you a little hack. Everybody think about this. Sometimes setting goals in today's world, I don't even use the word goals anymore because we're so damn busy. We're like the, remember the road runner and the Tasmanian devil? Remember the Tasmanian mm -hmm. devil used to spin so much or be yeah. a dust cloud around him? I think that's all of our lives. That's how I picture all of us, right? You guys today, when you're done with this, this interview, we're going to be just go, 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 go. We got dust clouds around us. So people try to set <laughs> goals right people try to set goals you're like set goals i'm just hoping to get through today and i can't wait to get to my pillow tonight and Hold hopefully i'll on, be alive man. when i get there right so if that's you if you're if you're resonating with any of that instead of trying to set goals looking forward this is a really great secret to get vision and clarity on where you want to go let's pretend it's a year from now right now it's a one-year anniversary the three of us are talking all of you guys are listening and it was the best year of your entire life like the the year that makes you wake up on fire where you feel better people think you you lost weight you tanned you're you're, you're exercising like you just look amazing you walk in a room and your presence just like flows across the room it's the best year of your life and then just write down what's that look like with your finances how much money are you making? What are you doing? Do you, how many doors do you own? Or what business are you in? And you just start writing down and visualizing the best year of your life. Like literally have it come from your heart, not your thoughts. Just how does it feel? How does it feel when your wife looks at you? What's your confidence level? What's your courage level? Then you start writing and all of a sudden you can't stop. Best year of my life. This is the money I'm making. This is my body. I got my, I got my six pack back or I, I, I'm in my high school jeans and just boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden that gives you a vision of where you want to go. And then the, the best part about that is think about once you have that vision, think about the crap that you do on a weekly basis that doesn't serve that bigger vision of you, that better version of you, and start eliminating that. Instead of making a to-do list, because we all got one, Jake, you got one a mile long on your desk. When's the last time you made a not to-do list? Like the shit that doesn't serve you, doesn't serve God, doesn't serve your bigger future, doesn't serve making more money, doesn't serve your wife feeling better, your husband feeling better, your kids on a better level. There is stuff we do. It's a hypnotic rhythm that was impl implanted in us by our parents, by tradition, by teachers that need to go. Like never do it ever again, period. So I know you asked me one question, what is successful people? Successful people, whether they know it or not, because like me, a lot of a lot of, there's a lot of times you're an incompetent, successful person, right? It's it like, uh, like you're, and I shouldn't say incompetent, like it's, it comes to you naturally. You don't sit down and plan your future, but all I know is successful people, whether they know it or not, they have a vision. They know where they're pointing their ship. I like that. I love that. I, in, in this, in the book, you should, had a great little story about the seven levels deep exercise. I don't know if you could share that with the listeners. Cause I thought that was awesome. Cause it's, it's a really great way to pull something. That's like a, I think it's a life coaching technique. I mean, just pulling something out of somebody. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. So let's, let's look at it this way. So if you want to be, if success, listen, if you guys want to learn how to do multiple door real estate, you're listening to two, 
masters who've done it. Like who, why not learn from people who've done it? So the, the strategies are there. So get enrolled in their training, get their education, get whatever you can to learn from people. I, I've spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on my own education. Still, I'm in strategic coach. I pay 25 grand a year. I'm in genius network. I pay 25 grand a year. I'm in, I'm always learning because why not learn from people who've already done it? So if we know that the fastest way to success is learning from other people, let's go upstream a little bit and make sure we anchor in the strategies. So so you actually listen, so you actually implement, so you actually do what it is you think you want to do. And that's what Millionaire Success Habits is. That's why I wrote it. So if we know that you need a vision and clarity of where you want to go, so mm -hmm. think about it. Now you took a little time, you think about it and go in a year from now, I want this, I want to look like this, I want to feel like this, I want to make this much money. That's kind of, you, now you know where you're driving. For me, what can cement it in to make sure it happens is why the hell do you want it? Now, if I said to you, you guys are listening to us right now, there's a million other things you could be doing. Listen, a, a million other things, but you're here. So that means you want another level. But if I said to you, is financial freedom important to everybody? Listen, financial security when you're older, diversification, all those things are great whys. But there's an exercise I've been doing for about 10 years to really get to the why that stings, the why that gets your emotions going, the why that goes from your thoughts, all of a sudden you feel it in your heart. In fact, you'll get goosebumps. You'll get tears in your eyes. And it's asking yourself why. Uh, the book obviously explains it better seven yes. times. So if I said, mm -hmm. why do you listen to Jake and Gino? Because I want to own apartments. Why do you want to own apartments? Because I'd like some more financial security. Why do you want more financial security? Because in a crazy world, I want my kids to have a better option. Okay. Why do you want your kids to have a better option? When you ask that seven times, and I'd encourage everybody listening to do yes. this exercise, what happens about the fifth time you ask that question, you feel it shift. You feel your physiology change from your thoughts and your brain and your thinking to your heart. And all of a sudden you start, you'll get to a part where you go, wow, because I want to be around for my kids. My dad was never around. Why is it important you're there for your kids? that you're there for your kids is because my dad died and I regret I didn't spend enough time with him. It always goes to something 10 times, a hundred times deeper than you ever imagined. I did this exercise for the first time 10 years ago and I was going through the process. I wanted to create a business. I wanted to create a legacy. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to set an example in this industry. I wanted to change a lot of lives. When I flopped from my thoughts to my heart, my three top answers were, I never want to go backwards. And when I said that, I felt emotional. I thought about living in a trailer park. I thought about wearing the hand-me-downs. I thought about kids making fun of me. And, and then the gentleman, the guy I was doing with it, Joe Stump said to me, well, why is it important that you don't go backwards? And I remember thinking to my kids, if anybody listening has kids, you think about your kids, you get emotional. I started crying, tears coming down my face. I couldn't even control it. And I said, I want my kids to have choices. I don't want to raise entitled brats, but I want my kids to have choices that I didn't have. So I started thinking about, you know, I hired this guy as a business consultant and now I'm sitting with tears in my eyes and my why has nothing to do with my business, nothing to do with the bottom line, nothing to do with affecting lives. It has to do, I don't want to go backwards. I want my kids to have choices. And he said, there's still one more left. Why is it important your kids have choices? And literally my heart opened up and I remember saying, because I want to be in control. I said, and, and I don't, I'm not a control freak. And this is my story, Jake and Gino, and everybody, you have your own. But for me, my parents were married nine times when I was a kid. I moved all the time. I was never in control. New houses, new friends, new stepsisters, brothers, parents, new school. You know, I, every time I'd feel like a little bit of safety, I got ripped out of it and have to live at grandma's. Got ripped out, moved someplace else. So as a kid, I never felt in control. And I realized at that very moment, I work my ass off. I do what I do because I don't want anybody to tell me how to live, where to live, how to vacation. I coach Little League. I coach softball. I take off in the middle of the day whenever I can to be with my kids. I don't want somebody telling me, oh, no, I'm sorry. You took off last week. You can't take off this week. Screw you. Like, I, I, I even retired my parents when I was in my early 30s because I didn't want to worry about them anymore. I want control of my decisions, my life, and how I do things. When I realize that, guys, if I know where my ship should be pointed, if I have my GPS on, right, I'm not just in a Ferrari, but I know my destination. I'm in the freaking Ferrari, and I know I'm driving to Florida. Most people just are driving fast and getting lost. So now you know where you're going. When you attach your heart on why the hell do you want to drive there, why do you want this success, then those bad days, nothing can, listen, a bad day, if you say, I want financial freedom, I got to get through this deal. Yeah, that's okay. But if I say I am not going backwards, my kids are going to have choices and I'm in control of my life, I will make that deal happen. I'll climb through a brick wall. I'll jump over a mountain. I'll do anything in my power. So you guys want an unfair advantage to outdo the competitors? 
learn from guys that are doing it like Jake and Gino and if touch, figure out why, where you want to go and why the hell you want it. And there'll be, nobody will touch you. No, not even compare. Wow. So that's, whew, I, I love uh, that. Gino, let me jump in here for a second because I, there's like this weird connection and, and Dean's really pulling this out of me because I have two kids. Gino has six kids. He homeschools and Dean, you have kids. And, and Gino wrote an article, I think, or is in, in the process of writing an article about how multifamily is similar to kids. And even going back to our book, we closed the subtitle with Take Control of Your Destiny Through Multifamily Investing. I think it all comes back to what he's saying is that you want that control and you want to be able to support, create generational wealth. And that's why I think everybody's here because they're sick of having guys dictate to them and they want to be in the driver's seat and be able to take care of their families and, and be there for them. And of that time freedom so i'm just i'm just right right now dean you're crushing it man this is this is like hitting home for me right now yeah but, but but it's the truth right i mean it is listen would you when you do you want and let me just ask you jake would you ever want in your life at any age someone tells you where you could live or how you have to live on social security or 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 you have to stay in your job until you're 72 years old in order to get the pension that you want and health insurance like as a man, as a, even a woman, anybody listen, we I don't want anybody to tell me Dude, how to Dude, that live. burns so deep with inside me, it's ridiculous. Like that that desire yeah. for control and freedom and and, to, and be able to take care of my surroundings, my family is so it's such a fire in my gut and and, and I've just been able to pull it through with the the apartment investing that no doubt, man, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I mean th- just, think about that's this. Me, though. Yeah, I mean that's think about me. but th- I think yeah. everybody watching, I think we've yeah. been toned down by society. Listen, yeah. I mean, do you, do you want to be told go wait in that line? Like, let me just ask you, you go someplace and someone says, oh yeah, you can hear, but go wait in that line like everybody else. I don't want to wait in lines. I don't want to be rude and cut me, buddy. I want to create the freaking line. I don't want to wait in someone else's line. But so many of us are trained, be be obedient, stand in line, do what everybody else does. Yeah, do what everybody else does. You get what everybody else has. Yeah, if yeah. you don't want what all your friends have, you don't want the, the worry that your parents, listen, my parents, I love them to death. Neither one of them have more than $10 in the bank. Now that sounds really rude, and it's be- but I support them. Literally, they they want for nothing. I buy them new cars every couple of years. They both have houses. They both go on vacations. There's nothing they want for. But thank God I have the ability to do that. What would my parents be doing if I didn't do what I do? They'd both be living on Social Security right now, going to the you know going to the the, the cheapest Medicaid doctor they can instead of I got my mom and dad a, a concierge doctor. So whenever they need something, they can pick up a phone and call their doctor. Like I get to take control and do that. I'm not bragging. But man, that is that puts me in the fight. Yeah. You asked me earlier, Gino, what drives me? I don't ever want that to go away. I might say, Mom, sorry, you got to do Medicaid and, and 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 you know live on your six hundred and twenty dollars a month. That that they said no. I send her a check every single week. And so so find that for me. And I think it's the same for you guys and everybody listening. If <clears throat> don't be don't be embarrassed that you want to be in control of your life. I mean that's I mean that's. That's that's a driving force that no one will stop you. Well, Finding your why. Yeah, yeah, one thing I'm trying to push with our community is I'm trying to have people share their successes on online or our community. I want everyone to create the goal sheet, but at the end of the week, every week, like our my success well, this week was to have you on the show. We're closing a 65 unit deal. I'm sharing successes with others because success breeds success. And I want people not to be jealous of what you're doing, but people to admire what you're doing. Because if you hate what Dean is doing and what Jake and Gino are doing, you're never going to achieve what we're doing. It's just going to repel it. So um, I think sharing sharing your success with others, not bragging about it, but at the same time saying, hey, this is what I'm doing this week. What do you guys do this week? I think that's what I'm trying to compete with the community, with the community. And that's what I'm trying to convey here. So I think that's vitally important also. Well, just think about it. We're, we're decisive in that we want to live a better life. We're decisive. We don't want someone to tell us how to live. We're decisive, that, decisive in the fact that we want more. We want to make more. And then it comes to getting the education. And then we're like, ah, I don't know. It's like, uh-huh. it's like, listen, if you get your cable bill for free because you hijacked it from your neighbor, <laughs> that's what karma is going to give you. Yeah, Go unplug right. it and pay for the damn bill right now. Or else everything's going to be that way in your life. Like I watch people that try to cheat the system and try to cut corners and they're cutting corners their entire life. Like you, I tell everybody all the time, I charge for my expertise because it took me 30 freaking years to figure this shit out. Right? So it's like, if you are the type that knows that you need to pay for speed, I want to go faster. I, I'll hire, uh, uh, I'll hire, I just had a, we wanted to learn how to be better on, on YouTube, right? So we're killing it on Facebook. We're killing it on Instagram. We're doing amazing for real estate deals and my education, but we weren't doing great on YouTube. I found the best YouTube guy there was and paid him 20 grand to spend a half a day at my office. Everybody's like, oh my God, 20 grand. I'm like, 
I could take six months and have my team figure this out, or I could spend five hours and 20 grand and be up and running in two weeks. We're, yeah. cr- we're, we're, long, we're ramping up on YouTube because of that. So like, that's my mindset. Learn that value comes from wisdom more than going out and buying a new car, right? What is, what is the ROI, the return on investment they could get by just learning one strategy you guys have? Like, don't buy uh, multi-units with flat roofs because they do X, Y, and Z and you can't get funding with flat roofs. I, one thing could change everything. Nevertheless, hundreds of things you guys. Or one so, connection. Anyway, I've just, yeah, one connection. So anyway, one I can connection. go on a rant on that. Before we get off to the short answer questions, I, my, my last question uh, is, you know, what's your best tip for people getting into business? Um, you know, I would say, not to go back to what I already shared, but there's a lot of different things. We think out of our like logical brain and we think out of our emotional brain. So we can go emotional on my own business. I'd have freedom and joy and more independence. That's great. That's emotional. And then there's logical. I can make decisions. Is this the right time? Is this the right economy? Is this the right interest rate? Is this the right education? Emotional and logical. We all make decisions out of both. But our emotional brain is literally 90% stronger than our logical brain. We make every decision in our life, whether we know it or not, based on emotions. You could say, no, it was a logical decision. No, if you really dug deep, it was an emotional decision. Mm -hmm. It was going to make you feel a certain way. It make you feel like you had freedom, make you feel that you have control, make you feel like you're the man of your house, you're the woman that takes control, whatever. Like it's all emotional based. So if I was going into business and starting today, I literally would do the exercise I talked about. It's a year from now. You're in business. It's the best. It's going exactly. It's the best year of your life. You're in business. What does your business look like? and draw it out. Visualize it. I own a hundred doors. I'm doing this. I have one personal assistant. I go to work at nine. I exercise eight. Like lay out what that looks like and do nothing but focus on that, right? Where they teach NASCAR drivers. If you get in a spin, if you stare at the wall, what do you do? You run right into it and you die. If you get in a spin, you find an opening and put all of your obsession on the opening and steer towards that. That's life. That's the secret of life. Know where you want to go in your business and every single day, and, and this is something I work on all the time. Every day, look at your goals. Don't write your goals January 15th and then not look at them again till next year. Write your goals down. What does your business look like? And look at that shit every single day of your life and vision it as it's coming. And then secondly, know why the hell you want the business in the first place. Why do you want the business, right? If you know why, if you know where you're going and why, okay. If you know what, what you guys are successful, right? That's why you guys have both of your, 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 you know, your goals and what you're doing in front of you. So know why you're doing it, visualize it and look at it every day. And then know why you want it, attach your heart to it. And man, it, whatever you plug in, you'll be unstoppable. No I doubt. It. I mean, yeah, it's, it's right there. And we're saying like your goals, whatever, this is just reverse engineering of where I want to go. Right. I got where I'm going at the top and then the little actions that are going to take place to get me there underneath it. It's as yeah. simple as that. Higher emotions, lower intelligence. I think that's so, I think that's so true. And uh, I just want to plug one more thing in the book. Try the 30 day news diet. I guarantee you that'll be the hardest thing you'll ever do. I was on day eight and all of a sudden my buddy texts me about the, uh, about wall street imploding at 1500 points gone. I only lasted yeah. eight days, my friend. I tried. Oh, to man, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not supporting you here. I'm sorry. I gotta. Oh. I gotta get. You know, I gotta help you out here, dude. It uh, is so hard, man, to get. Like he's talking about the negativity to get out of that. Try the 30 day news diet. It is. It is yeah, I tell. I tell everybody. I mean, just try it. For, listen, we only have a certain amount of time in our in our lives in our day. We have 24 hours in a day. I just don't want to be fed with stuff that yep. puts me sideways, right? Yep. Literally, everybody's like, "Wow, did you see the stock market crash?" I'm like, I have no idea. I didn't I even literally until the text. Do not watch the news. I don't give a shit. Uh, nothing's going to affect me. Like, I can't change it. I don't get. I, and listen, that's hard for people watching right now. All really I know is. is, all I know is, as entrepreneurs, as somebody who wants the next level, I'll, I'll leave this last piece with you guys. And then if you have last questions, great. But I'll leave this with you. If you, for entrepreneurs, those that want to start a business, you want to go to another level, the number one thing, the number one most important thing I can give you right now is to protect your confidence at every possible place you can. Think about anything you, have you ever had anything good in your life? Jake and Gino, I'll even ask you, has anything good in your life ever happened when you had no confidence? When your confidence is down, do you ask the girl for a date? Do you start the new business? Do you buy the 25 doors or 30 doors, your first building when you don't, when you don't have confidence, even when it's off like 3%, not zero, when it's just down a little, you go, ah, maybe next time. Ah, let me just, I'm safe. Let me me stay, let me stay living here in New York because my family's here and, and I have their support. When your confidence is down, 
nothing goes well. You don't make you don't make decisions. You play safe. How's playing safe work for you? You wouldn't be listening to us if if you liked playing safe. Screw safe. So do everything in your power to protect your confidence. For me, watching the news kills my confidence. I want to see people, you know, our president's crazy or not, or he's making dumb decisions or not, or the economy drops or not. Like all that does is tag my confidence and I know it'll affect the decisions I make. So for me, I only want to empower my brain with the things that'll boost my confidence and get me to take action. Thank you. You said it before the show. You said 90%. It's all up here. Right? It is. It's all up there. It's yeah. all up there. Yeah. No if you doubt. think you can't, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you yeah. know? No, and, and you got to insulate yourself from this shit. There's so much negativity coming in your life. If you can feed your mind with positive and, and, and keep the rest out, you're going to be that much better for it. So yeah. the book talks about habits. I ask everyone that comes on the show about this. So give me your best habit for success, something you do on a daily basis, a weekly, whatever. What, what makes Dean tick here and, and be successful? What's the number one habit? Oh, there's so many of them. Um, the quick answer would be, be the observer of your thoughts. Your thoughts will screw you up every single time. The, only, the thing that stands between you and your next level of life is the story you tell yourself. If you think it's too complex, that it's, there's too many people in the business, uh, I'm not smart enough, there's smarter people, there's, there's whatever story you tell yourself is your reality, is your life. If you live in too small of a town, too big of a town, you don't have enough education, you don't have enough money to start, you're not smart enough. Anything you tell yourself is your story, and that's the difference. So change your story, change your life. And that story will come up in daily thoughts. If you're having a bad day, it's just your thoughts making you have a bad day. The, the physical world probably didn't change much from today as it was yesterday. It's just your thoughts. It's the hardest thing in the world to do. I still work on it every day. But if you could be in a state, if you're in a state of panic, just immediately stop and say, what am I thinking about right now? You're thinking thoughts that will create panic. Switch the thoughts, you'll switch the way you feel. I, I know that sounds so simple. It's not, but you start that process. The only thing standing between you and your next level is your thoughts. I'm telling you right now, your thoughts and your story, change the story, change your thoughts, change your life, man. Okay. We're talking about fast forwarding people's lives. We made the mistakes. So we're here to help people fast forward. What's the biggest mistake you made in the beginning of your career that people could eliminate right now? Something that will get them, you know, going quickly so they don't make that same mistake. I didn't read books. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't go to live events. I didn't learn from other people. I thought I, I thought no one understood me and I had to figure it out all on my own. And the truth is most people around me didn't understand me. My parents thought I was nuts. My friends thought I would, was an idiot. Um, uh, you know, I was a dreamer. You know, it's funny. You're, you're a dreamer until you're successful. And then a lot of times you just got lucky, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's either you're a dreamer or you got lucky, but hey, it's all right. So I would say the biggest mistake I made, I, I've burned through a book a week right now. I yep. buy education. I learn from people playing the game at a higher level than me. I wish I would have started that in my 20s. Very cool. Uh, best deal and why? Best deal and why? Um, best deal, probably, I'll just go back to, I've had some great deals now. I mean, I've had, um, you know, I bought 300 houses in the outskirts of uh, Detroit when the market crashed all at one yeah. tax auction. I bought 375 properties with one fell swoop. Um, that was an amazing deal. But if I look back, probably the biggest deal was, uh, the best deal for me was I bought a piece of vacant land um, and uh, I was going to subdivide it and put houses on it. And, uh, and no one bought it because there was neighbors around that, you know, you only need one finicky neighbor to hold up a deal forever. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but when you're, especially when you're in development, you know, the, the whole not in my backyard yeah. syndrome, they bought a house, but now you're going to put a house behind them and they don't want one in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I bought this place that everybody said, stay away from because it used to be an old vineyard and nobody wanted it developed. And I was running into trouble and being creative, thinking outside the box. I realized I, I instead of hiding from it, remember I said earlier, your biggest breakthroughs on the other side of your biggest obstacle had a piece of property where they were fighting me to subdivide to put 20 houses on it so finally i just went to the people my neighbors that were fighting me like i was like i was stabbing their babies like they'd come to a they'd come to a planning board meeting and yell at me like i was this evil capitalistic monster right so i just knocked on the door i'm like how can i how can i make this i'm subdividing i don't care if it takes me forever to do it but i'd like us to be friends i live right down the street i've been in this town my whole life and the first guy said to me, well, I don't want cars coming right through my backyard. And it just hit me. I'm like, what if I sell you a little piece? And then you got a bigger backyard. He's like, 
that'd be amazing. I said, would you support me then? He goes, absolutely. So I went to all the neighbors. I spent 200 grand for the property. I did lot line revisions for like five of the neighbors and brought in 300 grand in lot line revisions before I ever did the subdivision. Nice. And all my neighbors loved me. They all applauded me. And then I put, <laughs> then I did a 17 lot subdivision in the middle and I sold that for a million or something. And I, I made it, it was my first deal I ever netted a million dollars on. That's um, great. So anyway, yeah, sometimes you make, a, you get lemons, you make lemonade, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. So you got the book right now. Yep. Got the book out. And um, Gino, you got the book and we got the book to hold up for the, the YouTube folks no, here. We, uh, we're I don't have it. But oh, what, I, man. What, I, what I need Jake to do is I need Jake doesn't read so that he's going to get off the call and he's going to get on Audible. That's what he's going to well, do. Well, it's right. on Audible, right? You got it on uh, Audible? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I I'm going to get it on Audible. Yeah. So you got the book going. What What other projects are you excited about right now? Oh, a lot of things. I have I have my book uh, that's going great on uh, we're, we're, we learned how to sell and get books in people's hands through social media, which is amazing. I'm learning something every day. You know, I've, I did infomercials forever. Um, and it's fun doing these creative videos to get people to stop and get them engaged online. So we created an offer where people can get the book for free if they just cover the shipping and handling. And why, how that's working for me is when they get the book and they love it so much, they're coming back and say, What's, what, what, right. what more can I get from you, right? So I'm building this massive reciprocity, like, ah, he's probably sending me this shitty book for free. And then they get it and they're like, oh my God, it's a hardcover. It's amazing. I love this book. And then they come back and say, what other education do you have? So that's working. I love that. Um, uh, I'm... I've launched live events around the country. So we're, we just did New York last week, but we're doing, we're seeing about three to 4,000 people a week right now nice. uh, around the country and different uh, millionaire success habits, live events. So that launched um, this year. I literally decided in the last month, I want to put, I want to buy a thousand doors, a thousand apartments. Uh, and then by the end of 2018, I, I owned, when the market crashed, I bought about 2000 single family homes. Um, and I'm down to about 300 and I'm well, not about, I'm down to 362 of them and I'm going to exit out of the, that last bunch. And now I'm going to put my energy and effort into uh, multi doors, exactly what you guys do. So I might hit you guys up for a little advice. So you guys want to know about so, this? Well, yeah. What about the transition there? You're going from single family to multifamily. What, uh, what's the reason behind that? Uh, less complexity. Just being okay. honest. If, yeah. if, if I love single family homes. If I was going to own 10 and diversify a portfolio, you get someone that's never done real estate. If you want to wholesale in real estate, which I, I kind of pioneered that when the market crashed, I didn't invent wholesaling, but I know i made it available to a million people, right? So I made wholesaling yeah. cool. Uh, most everybody in the space will give me that credit. They're in the wholesale business. Nobody even knew what that was till I put it on TV and wrote books about it. Just matching up buyers and sellers. So someone wants to be in the real estate space and doesn't have much money, matching buyers and sellers. There's no better time in history. There's a trillion dollars of cash coming into the real estate market this year. People are dying for deals. So you're, just, you're really a deal finder for other people. So wholesaling is good. Fix and flips. Somebody wants to do a couple of fix and flips a year to make an extra whatever money that is. Um, the average one, 60 grand a year, according to Realty Track. So we teach how to do that. Um, and then I would teach people how to buy and hold, which I did. I hundreds and hundreds of them, thousands of them, right? Um, but now when I really look at it, if you're going to own three to five to seven, get a good property manager, it could be easy. But the complexity of me owning over a thousand compared to owning a thousand under maybe a thousand under 10 roofs or, or under a hundred roofs or a thousand under a thousand different roofs, the complexity for me is no comparison. Now, listen, I have to be honest, my ROI, my cap rate, my return on my cash on cash was better with single family homes. But when I look at the overall complexity and long-term play for me at this level, it's, it's multi-door. Very, very cool. Uh, what are the, the best sites for listeners to get hold of you? Best sites? For, um, a uh, couple of things. Uh, I'm on if anybody wants to grab the book for free, you can go to deansfreebook.com, deansfreebook.com. That's easy. And the book's free, hardcover, just pay the shipping and handling. If you want to watch, I do weekly vis uh, videos on Facebook. I do weekly videos on Instagram. So you can just go to Instagram or Facebook, look up my name uh, on Facebook, not the personal page, but look for the fan page. I think there's like a million, three, a uh, million, 300,000 people follow me on the, on yeah. Facebook. Um, and then Instagram, it's just, you know, at Dean Graziosi. Very cool. So go to go to those sites, get the free book, and then uh, Dean's gonna show you what's up, right? That's that exactly, exactly. Cool. Gino, you got anything else? Um, I love the book. I got the book sent to me. Uh, I think everyone, next step, get off the call, buy the book. Um, you're gonna, you, you really have to be receptive to the to, to to the message. And I think if you're on this call right now, you're receptive to that message because you want change. You're stuck like Jake and I was a few years ago. Uh, you just want that change. You just want to take control. 
of your life. And a lot of the stuff that Dean said mirrors what, what happened to me. And it's really, really incredible that he's on this call because everything that he experienced in life, I might've had some nicer stuff. I didn't have hand-me-downs, I, but still, it's not about the clothes. It's not about the money. It's about just trying to do your best and, and trying to, trying to, trying to be that successful person. So uh, I just want to thank him because I know he's a really busy guy for taking the time out to speak with us and just to share his message. Um, and it's, it's been really, really empowering for me. So I want to thank him. Yeah, yeah, Dean, your energy is amazing, man. I Thanks, love dude. the passion and I love the energy and it's just contagious. So I mean, heads off to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, it, was, it was a pleasure. I had fun, man. You guys Thanks, take care dude. of yourself. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. We trust that you enjoy the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast. Visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. See you next time when Jake and Gino share more of their investing secrets with you.